morning, everybody. That's not Paul, oh, hey. by the way. I'm not Paul. <laughs> but as I kill us. <laughs> Jesus. Um, We're in the car for 30 seconds. You're running me off the road already. See, that, now you know the fear that Paul has <laughs> each and every week. Don't forget to hit, ah, good job. <laughs> After you hit that subscribe button, be sure to head over to sportscaster.com and also follow hashtag sports on sportscaster.com. Premier episode will be Saturday, July 20th at 8 a.m. Paul is going to be at a uh, golfing engagement because he's having, he happens to be a very avid golfer. He's actually pretty good. I have solicited the services of a good friend of ours, of hashtag, he's been mentioned many times on hashtag sports. This is Ryan Lasel. Hey. You can follow him right down here at Ryan Laso underscore RSN. You can also follow them on Facebook, uh, Rock Sports Network. Uh, is there anything else I should plug, or am I just totally no, no, yeah, here? yeah. I mean, I, my, a lot of my traffic comes during the the Bills season. I don't, I don't really do a lot of Bills stuff on the off season. So uh, mm-hmm. I apologize now if you follow now and, and expect Bills stuff. It's mostly. The NBA is amazing right now, and you know, uh, baby, baseball is kind of cool at this point. So, but training camp's getting going in a few weeks, so I'll be down on the sidelines giving coverage. Um, you know, so if you're someone who likes to go to training camp or can't make it on a specific day, I give you different kind of coverage for training camp. Yes. I'm not one of those guys with like the oh, here's three takeaways from training camp because I feel like everyone does takeaways from training camp, and it's really just yeah. a rehash of the same stuff over and over. So I try to do a lot of like live tweeting of training camp because yeah. I feel like when I can't go, that's the stuff that I want. I don't care what happened at the end of training camp. I want to know what's going on as it's happening. Yes. You know, who's returning kicks? Who's returning punts? Who's uh, what's the defensive alignment look like? The offensive alignment look like? Who's starting, uh, taking snaps at the quarterback and wide receiver position? So that's the kind of stuff that I do during training camp as opposed to the, you know, all so and so looked really good today. He was, you know, five for six for 70 yards. It's like, you know, I kind of give you the game, the play-by-play. Well, do you ever do you ever get, like, uh, like because you've been to camp many times yeah. and you've seen that. Does, do, uh, do people ever, like, message you, hey, could you watch this guy today let me know? Yeah, yeah. Talking? So I get, you know, I, I, I try to in the mornings, at least on my, on my way to camp, uh, you know, just kind of tweet and say, hey, I'm going to be at camp today. Is there anything anybody wants me to take a look at oh, okay. um, specifically? And, and people will comment on, you know, oh, hey, you know, can you tell me who's, like last year, obviously the big the big story was you know hey what where's what's Allen doing like you yeah. know what, what's going on with Allen what's going on with the receiver position those are the big battles last year so you know I, anybody who tweets at me or even you want to slide into my DMs I'll uh, I'll cover whatever you want me to cover so <laughs> how many people have slide into my DMs so oh my you know it would be it would be welcome you didn't <laughs> I know I, I remember specifically last year uh, you know we were talking just a, just a quick point. You, you were telling me um, you, it's amazing how fast the ball comes out of Allen's hands. Yeah. And you're like, I've never seen anything like it before uh, live. It was just one of those It was just one of those things where he just – he's got a lot of power, man. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's scary. It's one of those things where, you know, it's, it's completely different when it's in person, right? Yeah. Because you heard all through college – I mean, I, I was on Allen when, you know, he, he originally started at Wyoming, mm-hmm. um, you know, because as a – a negative Bills fan or, you know, or whatever, a pessimistic Bills fan. I'm kind of always looking yep. at quarterbacks in the future because you're going to need one eventually because the Bills haven't had one since probably Bledsoe, a, a legitimate one at least. <laughs> so it's usually Paul usually tortures me about Bledsoe. He says he's awful all the time. Hey, I mean, you know, he was the, he's the best quarterback since Kelly. I mean, again, it's like being king of the crap pile, but, but whatever. <laughs> so... So, you know, I, I've watched Allen for a long time, and you knew he had a live arm, right? Everything you read about him, he had a huge arm. You know, he, he could throw the ball all over the field. He could make every pro throw. But then you get into camp, and you watch it, and you're standing next to him as he's throwing the ball, and you're standing next to Zay Jones as he's catching balls for him, and you can hear the ball cut through the air. That's a completely different experience than, oh, than just watching him on film. The other thing is this. Um, I don't know if you want to give a little insight to the fans because, you know, not – not many fans, I mean, they go to camp, but they don't have the, the you know the on on field coverage as, as you do. It's almost like uh, you know, because they. I mean, Rodak obviously mm-hmm. he, he left. Yep. Um, you know, Capaccio's there. A lot of those local guys are there. Uh, what, what's the feel of those guys down there? Like, what's that? What's so, that vibe like? Yeah. So it's it's interesting, right? Because 
I feel like a lot of Bills fans, it's easy to lash out at the media, Mm -hmm. the guys that are covering the team day in and day out. I think Rodak caught a lot of that, and I think you see, you know, a lot of the the national guys kind of get that kind of coverage. But, I mean, all the guys that I've worked with at camp and I've kind of talked to have been super helpful. I mean, Rodak was, you know, very helpful my first year that I was down there. Um, just in, in like, oh, hey, you know, the, the press conference is going to be over here. Or, you know, uh, I, know, I remember my first day at camp, they were doing the scrums after practice. And I was worried about getting up to the podium. You know, and I, I said to him after interviewing one of the players, I said, you know, should we start heading up, you know, for, for the interviews? And he's like, oh, no. He goes, they, they let practice disperse. He goes, and they make sure that we're ready for it. You know, so it kind of just let me relax a little bit. And I think, oh, okay. you know, that's one of the things that Bills fans, it's easy, again, to attack Rodak because he's from the New England area. He's obviously, used, you know, he – but they these guys work hard. This job is a lot harder than a lot of people think it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not just – I mean, I'm just a guy. I go down there and I just live tweet, right, because I don't have anybody to answer to. I just go down there. I've got, you know, Gary, my producer, who's really good about just kind of giving me the keys and saying just do whatever you want to do. These guys have – bosses, right? I mean, yep. Rodak has to have stories for ESPN. Capaccio has to have content for the radio, and he has to have content for, for the website. You know, Pascalia, he's got to have content for, for his station. I just go down there, and I'm like, if I can get content, great, but otherwise I'm just there to kind of, like, give the fans an experience that maybe they're not getting from other outlets. Yeah. So, it's a lot easier for me and for fans to go and, and do what they do, but it's a whole different story when you're searching for a storyline that other guys don't have because yeah. you want to be the one to have that story and have that headline, right? And that's one of the things that Matthew Fairburn has done so well yeah. over the last few years is he's always seems to get the right angle on a story. Um, <laughs> and that's really difficult to do because all of the media guys have the exact same access. I have the, have the exact same access when I go with my credentials that Rodak does, that Capaccio, Biscali, all those guys do. So for them to have all the same access to one another but still be able to find a unique story, that's, that's a, I mean, that's a skill. Yeah, that's got to be tough. Yeah. I mean, we have so many guys. I mean, when I went... Uh, the fortunate time that Paul and I were able to go, uh, it was it was so interesting because you hear about these guys and you, and you hear about all the, the stories or whatever. And I think the biggest thing about Rodak was the biggest problem is that he when he was covering the Bills on his I think on his Twitter someone said on his Twitter profile he still had new, a former New England yeah like okay who puts the, I mean it's not your resume you're not putting <laughs> it's Twitter yeah like, what do you what do you actually do now. So uh, I think that's where he caught a lot of heat. But it's seeing all these guys live and, and how they're flying around, how, what they're saying to these guys, how they're talking to the players. And because they have that familiarity, I mean, because Sale's been around for a while, he has that familiarity with a lot of the players. Like, he'll just go up to a couple of players that he knows, be like, hey, you know, a couple minutes, can I talk mm-hmm. to you for a second? And, but I was interested to see how they – you. Yeah. You know, you notice that they'll flock to certain guys at the same time, and they know. Yeah, they know. So they, it's 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 really cool to watch because they know where to be during practice to make sure that they get the right storylines, right? Yep. So they know where uh, the offensive line works out. They know where the defensive line works out. They know where the wide receivers work out. So mm-hmm. they know where to go at what times during practice, and then they know who to go talk to. So you know, it's always funny to watch these players come off the off the field because they announce ahead of time what players are going to be there after practice up at the podium. Okay. Right, so you know you're not getting anything from them after immediately after practice. Yeah. But they always know the guys to go to when practice is over. Like if, <laughs> if it's Allen's not talking, they're gonna go talk to Allen. Right? And then yeah. they, they kinda they kinda they all move in like a herd. It's really interesting to watch. <laughs> I always watch the media guys because the cameras always follow the, the cameras, but then you've got Sal that's kinda off to the side talking to, you know, Lorenzo Alexander or somebody like that, and I'm like, Oh, I wonder why nobody's over there talking to Lorenzo Alexander with Sal. But also, not just the players, right? The, the, the most interesting interaction that I see with the, with the media guys, specifically Sal and um, uh, Pascalia, the, the guys that are there and they're kind of the, in, the, the, the local guys, they're really into talking to the members of the staff. Like, they talk to the training staff. Uh, Those guys won't talk to me. Like, I'll go up and I'll ask for, a, you know, like a roster. And they'll give me a roster for the day, which which they, they print out for us every day. They'll give me a roster, and I'll say, oh, so, so yeah, hey, how things how are things going? And they're just really short and curt with with me, which mm. is which is fine. I get it. Yeah. You know, they're they're they work for the Bills, but then Sal comes up to them, and they're like buddies, right? They're like best, bu- <laughs> they're like best buddies. So you, you find out why certain guys are able to break certain stories because they've just got connections within the team yeah. that you don't think of, right? You don't think of the the guy that's. Uh, 
carrying the water is going to know very much, but he's the one that carries the water over and gives it to, to Terry and Kim while they're talking to, <laughs> you know, while they're talking to Brandon Bean. You hear things, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's always interesting to see that relationship <laughs> building that Sal and those guys go through because, again, they've got to have that story that nobody else has. Yes. And if they can get that one angle and, and that one source that nobody else has, it makes the entirely difference. I mean, it makes all the difference in the world for them. It's all about the locating yourself. You know, you stand within earshot of, of the, the, the infamous... Um, uh, golf cart where, where oh. Terry always sits, you know, so you kind of stand within earshot of that and see if maybe you can catch something. And But, you know, it's like that, hey, don't look over there, but it's uh, Terry Pergula. So you try not to look, but, you know. <laughs> like the sun. Yeah, exactly. And it's so weird because those guys are probably so guarded because they don't, no one talks to a trainer. Or right. No one wants to talk to a trainer, and they're not used to being in front of a group of people and, and talking and, and uh, you know, divulging information. They feel if they do divulge the wrong information, they may not have a job anymore. And, sure. And I understand that completely. I, I was laughing at it because the one thing, you get to catch little things that no, normally people don't see. Um, I remember when uh, when I went, it was the, it wasn't last year, it was the year before. Ty Rod's there. Um, I believe TJ Yates was still on the roster and uh, Peterman. Yeah. And, you know, Dennison was going through a bunch of different drills with the quarterbacks and he would he would yell a play. He would say a play, and then he would uh, he would say like a coverage, and the guys would have to do their you know, go through the motion of their drop back, and then where their reads would be. And Tyrod's not even paying attention. No, he's not. He's just walking around. Music's playing there. You know, he's dancing around. He's not even going through his reads and everything. And I'm like, you know, it's a very telling sign that you know what I'm looking at right now. Fans behind me, but you know, because I was in the field, the fans can see what's going on. Yeah. However, coming from that school of like, what, what are you doing? Yeah. What, either you know this so well that you don't feel like you have to pay attention, or you just don't care. Yeah. Like you're just. Right. Yeah, and 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 fans see that from the stands, and they're like, "Oh, look at Tyron; he's having a great time, right?" Because they can't hear, they can't hear what Dennison is is trying to talk about. He just sees, "Oh, Yates is, you know, Yates is fighting for a roster spot. Peterman's a rookie, so obviously he's paying attention. Mm-hmm. Tyron's just having a good time. It's practice, not a big deal. But when you hear what it is they're trying to do, and then you extrapolate that out to what Tyrod struggled with while he was with Buffalo, which was reading <laughs> coverages and making reads, you know, once he was in the pocket, it kind of all starts to make sense. And I think that's one of the one of the disservices that they did for some time, and now McDermott has kind of ended that, is um, that everything's an open battle now, right? I mean, Tyrod was so comfortable in his position as the starting quarterback he didn't think it was it was anything that he was going to lose. And I think that McDermott's done such a good job of every position is literally a battle every day uh, at practice. And that's something that I, I think is very rare in the NFL. A lot of these guys get stuck in their ways and they're like, well, I'm the starting left guard because I've been the starting left guard for five seasons and they just drafted this rookie for depth. But McDermott's legitimately like, you, you've been a starting left guard for your entire career, but if this kid outplays you, I'm not going to play somebody just because he's been a guard for the last five years of his of his career, right? I mean, he's done such a great job of establishing a legitimate competition at every position. Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer, those guys feel like every day they walk into work and they're fighting for their position and they're fighting for their roster spot. And I think that's one of the reasons that we've seen this team come out and play so hungry over the last couple seasons. 